friends good morning all welcome back to cap classes my name is pavan kumar i am a qualified chartered accountant and also a qualified cost accountant i am a lecturer in financial reporting financial management and auditing and welcome back in today's video lecture we are going to discuss about the fundamental accounting assumptions fundamental accounting assumptions so you remember this there are three fundamental accounting assumptions so remember if fundamental accounting assumptions are followed no specific disclosure is required if fundamental accounting assumptions are not followed then specific disclosure is required having said that now the next question is you'll ask sir what are these fundamental accounting assumptions now i'm pretty sure that majority of you people remember this three first one is going concern Do you recollect what are the other two? Second one is accrual. Third one is consistency. So first one is going concern assumption. Second one is accrual assumption. Third one is consistency assumption. Now what is going concern? Going concern as I told you just now is the ability of an entity to continue its operations. in foreseeable future its operations in foreseeable future so what is foreseeable future usually foreseeable future means 12 months one year so the entity will be able to perform the entity will be able to continue its operations sir what is the meaning of this the meaning of this is that the entity has neither an intention nor a necessity to wind up or substantially reduce their level of activity or scope of business their level of activity or scope of business so just have a look at this a single reading going concern is the ability of an entity to continue its operations in foreseeable future that means minimum period of 12 months the entity that means the entity has neither any intention to wind up nor a necessity to wind up or they are also not even thinking of or they are also not under any necessity or pressure to curtail majority of their activity substantial scope of their business they are not going to shut down this is what we call going concern many of the students they might know what is a going concern but unfortunately the you know understanding of why going concern assumption is important is not there with many students now let me give you a very simple example to understand so x limited has prepared its balance sheet balance sheet of x limited in the balance sheet of x limited under the assets side they have written one item say laptop they said 36000 so they bought this laptop one year ago so cost of this laptop when they purchased cost of this laptop was 48000 life of laptop expected is 4 years so depreciation per annum is 12000 so the asset is one year old now cost of the asset 48000 less accumulated depreciation for one year 12000 so 36000 written down value whatever it is this is called carrying amount this is called carrying amount of the asset so the carrying amount of the asset is 36000 this 36000 you have put in balance sheet is this correct absolutely yes this is absolutely correct why even when you follow accounting standard 10 property plant and equipment this is the treatment this is called cost model so you are following cost model so you valued the asset at its historical cost minus accumulated depreciation which is absolutely correct as per accounting standards but what you need to understand is this accounting standards and all will apply when the entity is a going concern now imagine if you sold your company or if you have filed up a winding up petition so in case of a merger or in case of a takeover or in case of any amalgamation or in case of you know you going for a voluntary or uh, some other kind of wind up 
Now the question is, will you be able to fetch this 36,000 rupees from sale of this laptop? So till day, if it is going concern, if the entity is a going concern, if it is a going concern, we use the laptop. If it is not a going concern, we sell the laptop. So by using the laptop, I recover 36,000 is my gut feeling. By using laptop, I recover this 36,000 is my gut feeling. Now what happened? In case of winding up, I have to sell this laptop. So the question is, if I sell this laptop, will I be able to get 36,000? This is highly impossible. If I sell this laptop, if I sell this laptop, will I be able to get 36,000? The answer is, in majority of cases, answer will be no. So, when you cannot get 36,000, you should reduce this 36,000 to recoverable value. So, let me put it in a very simple way. If the entity is a going concern, nothing wrong if you show this asset as 36,000 in your balance sheet. But remember my dear friends, if your entity is no more a going concern, you cannot show this at 36,000. You should show this at its realizable value. You should show this at its realizable value. So the summary is like this. The summary is like this. If the enterprise is a going concern, going concern assumption, the answer may be yes and the answer may be no. If it is yes, all assets, all liabilities will be at carrying amount. Carrying amount. That means carrying amount is the amount which you determined as per some accounting standard, which is correct. But when the entity is no more a going concern, assets are to be valued at their realizable value. So obviously there will be difference between this and this. So in my example, I said carrying amount of laptop is 36,000. And say if laptop can be sold at 20,000, the difference between these two is loss now. This loss should be recognized in PNL. So when your enterprise is no more a going concern, if enterprise is no more a going concern, now remember it is like this. Going concern assumption holds good. There is no going concern assumption. In these two situations, your laptop here can be carried at 36,000. Here it should be carried at 20,000. So the difference is 16,000 which should be written off to PNL account. So this is book value or carrying value. This is realizable value. This is realizable value. Similarly, if there is any liability, there is any liability. Say there is one creditor. If the entity is a going concern, yes. If the entity is no more going concern. Now what happens? There is one creditor to whom you need to pay say 1 lakh rupees. If the, if the entity is a going concern, you have to pay 1 lakh rupees. And say for example, because of your financial crisis and when you have filed a voluntary winding up petition or you are thinking of doing the same, that creditor came to you and he said that pay me 70,000 I will accept. But if you go for winding up petition, I mean, I might not be able to get that money also. Or even under the process of winding up, the liquidator or official receiver is finalizing this for 70,000. So when the entity is no more a going concern, you need not pay 1 lakh rupees to the creditor, you have to pay only 70,000 to the creditor. So if going concern assumption is good, 1 lakh. If going concern assumption is not there, then you need to carry this creditor only at 70,000. This is known as redemption value. This is known as redemption value. So my dear friends, now if the entity is a going concern, assets will be valued at their carrying amount. Liabilities will be taken to balance sheet at their carrying amount. But if it is no more a going concern, assets are to be taken to balance sheet at realizable value and liabilities are to be shown at the redemption value in the financial statements. This is the reason going concern is very, 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 very important because it affects your whole balance sheet and it affects your whole P&L. Total, the shape of balance sheet and the shape of P&L account, everything will change based on the going concern assumption. That is the reason it is one of the major important things. So having understood the concept of going concern, now let us go to accrual. Accrual means, remember two things. One, income. In case of income, record income when it is earned. 
record income when it is earned but don't record income when it is received on receipt basis if you are recording income that will be cash accounting so recording the income when it is earned but not when it is received second one is expenses expenses recognize expenses when they are incurred when they are incurred but not when they are paid so if you do this and this this is known as cash accounting so there are two methods one is mercantile method accrual system of accounting accrual method of accounting and second one is cash method of accounting so as per this accounting standard one fundamental accounting assumptions accrual method is to be followed and cash method is not to be followed you cannot follow cash method so if you follow cash method say for example see if it is a company there is no point in discussing whether cash method is followed because section 128 129 of companies act made it very clear that a company should follow only accrual method of accounting it is stated in the context of proper books of account now you may ask sarji if there is one sole trader or if there is any partnership firm can they prepare books of account on cash method the answer is still no the answer is still no even partnership firms are sole proprietary concerns also they are encouraged to follow only accrual method of accounting if at all someone is following cash method then this should be disclosed because this amounts to deviation this amounts to deviation so if anyone is following cash method that should be disclosed in notes to accounts now again what is accrual method accrual method is recording income recognizing income when it is earned but not when it is received similarly expenses are to be recorded when they are incurred but not when they are paid this is called accrual method and the third one is consistency consistency means we follow accounting policies we follow accounting policies what are accounting policies accounting policies are significant accounting policies are remember this sap plus map remember this acronym accounting policy is sap plus map now what is this sap plus map sap means specific accounting principles specific accounting principles and what is map map means methods of applying that principles methods of application of principles say for example there is one accounting principle inventory is to be valued at cost or nrv whichever is lower this you know inventory is to be always inventory is to be valued at cost or nrv whichever is lower now the question is how this cost is arrived at this cost can be arrived in different methods it can be based on fifo it can be based on weighted average method it can be based on specific identification method it can be based on retail method it can be based on standard cost method so all these methods are accepted as per accounting standard 2 so accounting policies are specific accounting principles and the methods of application of the same so when you are following one method say for example 2017 i followed fifo method 2018 also you are expected to follow fifo method only that means if you follow one method of application of some specific accounting principle you should follow consistency from year to year so when you deviated a deviation say for example in 2018 you are following weighted average method that is to be disclosed and that should be justified as per accounting standard 5 so changes in accounting policies is dealt with by accounting standard 5 so what we assume unless otherwise specifically stated in the previous year whatever all the accounting policies you followed i assume that you are following the same accounting policies in the current year also but if there is any deviation if there is any change you have to disclose that so my dear friends we have discussed accounting standard 1 completely in detail disclosure of accounting policies so in that in specific we focused more on the fundamental accounting assumptions and the summary is there are three fundamental accounting assumptions going concern which is the ability of an entity to continue its operations in foreseeable future and the second fundamental accounting assumption is accrual this is recording income based on 
when it is earned but not based on when the cash is received for the same and recording expenses on the basis of you know their incurrence but not on the basis of their payment and the third fundamental accounting assumption is consistency in application of accounting policies from one period to another period and part two if fundamental accounting assumptions are followed then no specific disclosure is required if fundamental accounting assumptions are not followed then the deviation should be disclosed in most accounts so friends that's it this is fundamental accounting assumption signing off pavan kumar cap classes thank you